Aloha! I'm Mrs. Fisher and today we're going to be looking at prepositional phrases, objects of the preposition, singular and plural pronouns, one body and a man's. So what exactly is a prepositional phrase? Prepositional phrases are additional added words without a verb. All prepositions start with a prepositional word and they end with the object of the preposition. A preposition that begins a sentence is called an introductory phrase. If the introductory phrase is more than four words long, then it must be separated with a comma. Otherwise, it is optional. You can put the comma if you want. If it helps with um, clarity or to make it more smooth when, re when your reader is reading it. So, for example, during my summer vacation, one, two, three, four. I don't have to put the comma. It's not more than four words, but it does make sense that it's telling you, I'm about to tell you the main part of the sentence. That's why there's that comma there. I visited my son-in-law's family. That is Nancy's family right there. All right, so let's look at, if a prepositional phrase starts with a preposition, then what are prepositional words? So let's look at what prepositional words are. And this rap is so fun. Try to see if you could sing along with it. It gets very fast. I can do it when I don't have COVID. Start slow. These are all prepositional words. The most common. About, above, across, after, until, upon, throughout, but before, beside, between, against, as for, because, and beyond, unto, during, under, in, into, in, from, of, like, past, since, up, on, near, for, from, except, out, of, versus, regardless, of, aboard, amid, with regards to, along, among, around, at, except, for, underneath, according to, within, without, beneath, through, in spite of, her, by, way, of, Beside, between, against, as for, because of beyond, unto, during, under, and into, in, from, of, like, past, since, upon, near, from, from, except, out, of, versus, regardless of, aboard, amid, with regards to, along, among, around, at, except for, underneath, according to, within, without, beneath, through, in spite of, from, by way of, over, up, off, to, toward, instead of, on, up, down, up, by, will, behind, below, down. Under and into, in front of like past tense, up on your front, from base of out of verses, regardless of a board of with regards to along, among, around, and in the corner, into or two within, without beneath, through, in spite of, or by way of, over, of, off, to, toward, instead of, on account of, by, with, behind, below, down. Relationships between a noun and a word in the sentence. 
prepositional phrases consist of prepositions, objects of the preposition, and their descriptions. The object of the preposition can be found at the end of a prep phrase. It's a noun or pronoun. Many prepositions are used as adverbs, but don't to let that fool you and do not be disturbed. Prepositional phrases are easy to spot. Prepositions have objects, adverbs do not. Prepositions show relationships between a noun and a word in the sentence. Prepositional phrases consist of prepositions, objects of the prepositions, and their descriptions. All right, so the object of the preposition is that last word in the sentence. So prepositions start with a preposition, they do not have a verb, and they end with the object of the preposition. So, can you find the preposition and the object of the preposition in the following sentence? The miniature schnauzer puppy ran around the backyard. Tony drove around the island. Can you find around the backyard? We have the preposition is around. The object of the preposition is yard. Tony drove around the island. The object of the preposition is island preposition is around. So we always have that preposition and then the object. Preposition and the object. Why are prepositional phrases even important? Why do we care about them? Well, um, it's because there are certain pronoun references where you have to look at the object of the preposition to know the subject verb agreement. So here is um, a way for you to I'm going to help you get through this um, together. So I'm going to ask you a question. How many bodies do you have? Uh, it's not a trick question. Each one of us has one body, right? So here is a little wrap that's going to help you to remember um, how to, which words are going to be identifying singular and definite pronouns. Here we go. Subject verb agreement, singular and definite pronouns. In order to remember singular and definite pronouns, if you say you have a trick, that's it, I quit. Are you kidding? You don't have to listen if you don't like it. Indefinite pronouns have a trick. And that's legit. legit. Say each one of us has one body, one. and our body is an it. it. Each one of us has one body, and our body is an it. it. Each one body and it. it are singular. You must admit. You know that, right? Say any pronoun with body or one is an it. it. Any pronoun with body or one is an it. it. Well, wait. My trick is even more clever yet. Look inside of neither and either and what's in it. Oh yeah. Do you see they both contain it? Yes. Now it's singular. See All it. are singular on that you can bet. So each, either, neither, one, everyone, everybody, no one, nobody, anyone, anybody, someone, and somebody are indefinite singular pronouns. Each one of us has one body. Some are skinny, skinny, skinny. some are round. And the pronoun for body is it we have found. Now you will remember that because I broke it down. Break it down. Break it down. All right. All right. So, Subject of agreement, singular, and definite pronouns. All right, so that is such a great, clever trick. If you can just remember, each one of us has one body, and our body is an it. So we're going to call anything, any pronoun, with each, either, neither, everyone, everybody, someone, somebody, anyone, anybody, no one, nobody. All of those will be an it. And that's how we decide what verb to use. So I'm sure you recognize that each one of these contained either it, one, each, or body. So we have either has it, neither has it, one is one, right? 
Everyone has one in it. Everybody has body in it. No one has one in it. Nobody has body in it. Anyone has one in it. Anybody has body in it. Someone has one in it. And somebody has body in it. Now, why do you care about all of this? Well, any pronoun with body or one is singular. So when you refer to them, you must use the single verb tense. Before, you could not use they, them, or their to refer to singular noun or pronoun. However, now you can refer, you can use they, their, or them to refer to either singular or a plural noun. So you can say each student took their book home, and that is okay now. The change is due to um, MLA and APA grammatical convention change focused on English becoming a more inclusive language. So, but anyway, um, so why do we care? Well, we're going to be having to use remembering each one body, either and either one, for us to pick the correct verb to use. Why? Because when you have that object of the preposition following it, then it can become confusing. So, for example, this first one's not too confusing. No one is or are going to shower before jumping in the pool. Well, you know that one is singular, so you say no one is. You change this to it, <coughs> and you say it is. But now when you look at a sentence like this one, the second one, nobody from our lists, lists are plural. So you would normally say lists are, not lists is. But because we started with nobody, and then we had this option, this prepositional phrase following it. All of these have a prepositional phrase following it, right? From, of, from, around, with, and they all have objects. This, student, classes, house, flowers. Because of that, we look at this pronoun reference in the beginning, nobody, and we know that it's singular. It doesn't matter what's in the prepositional phrase. You could delete the prepositional phrase from the sentence and you just say nobody is or are helping with the cost of food. It would be nobody is. The third one. Now you do the same thing for each one and I'm not going to tell you the answer. I'm just going to read it to you that you have to put the right one. Anyone of the students is or are welcome to take the cat home. Anybody from our classes is or are allowed to watch the movie. Someone around the house is or are trying to scare us. Somebody with lay flowers was or were waiting in line. All right, hopefully you chose in each one of those, this was singular. So you should have chose is, 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 and was. So now the following pronouns are all singular. So replace the noun with the word it and state it and the verb to choose. So again, we have, now this one, this takes it even to another level where it sounds even more confusing if you don't know the rules. And our rules that I taught you today are that each, either, neither, everyone, everybody, no one, nobody, someone, somebody, anyone, anybody, all of those are singular. So we have to choose the singular verb. In order for us to do that, if you change the singular, all of the words to the word it, it helps you choose the correct verb. So each student, it, student writes or write? It writes, student writes, their name on the board either Nikki or Lance. Now you might look at that and go, oh, look, it's lots of people, so it's more than one. No, when you see either, you have to ignore what comes after it, and it becomes singular. It is or are, which one would you choose? On neither Tony nor Ashley, again, we have to ignore Tony or Ashley. You just have to look at it. So let's read the sentence, neither Tony nor Ashley stays or stay in the Aloha Row. The next sentence, one of the dogs, you see one, so we know what, what do we have to do? Delete this prepositional phrase. Eat or eats all the dog food. Turn it into it. What would you say? It eats or it eats all the dog food. 
every one of the girls works or works, work or works on their presentation. When we see every one, we can leave this preposition because we know that's always going to be singular. It, work or works, which one would you choose? Everybody is or are invited to the party. Once again, this sentence, this, this is a singular. Which one would you choose, is or are? All right. Hopefully you did great on that. And now I have another rap that is equally as fun as that one, and this is called a man's. And it is really, really clever. Now these are different. The other one you had to pick singular. Now in this case, with the acronym AMANS, only these five do you choose from the prepositional phrase. So now it's depending on what's in that sentence. You don't scoop the preposition out for all, most, any, none, and some. The contents tell us if they refer to several or to one. A man's hand, some, all, most, any, none, and some. So now in your sentence, whatever you see, all, most, any, none, or some, you have to look at that object of the preposition or the contents of that sentence to determine is it referring to a singular or plural noun. So you can do correct subject verb agreement. All right, so let's look at a man's. This will help you to remember it. It is a very clever little, I like it, it's cute. This. Subject verb agreement, singular, and indefinite pronouns. My favorite! It's the best around. Our indefinite pronouns, which are always plural, are both few, many, and several. This is Fisher, I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart. Let me do this next part. A man's pronoun may be singular or plural, yeah. depending on if he is referring to one or two girls. Uh -huh. You know where I'm going with this. It's a trick. I'm sure you guess. A man's is an acronym that identifies indefinite pronouns that on content rely on almost any, none, and some. The contents tell us if they refer to several or to one. A man's handsome. Almost any, none, and some. Remembering that can be lots of fun. Four indefinite pronouns, which are always plural, are both few, many, and several. We know that there are five pronouns which can be either plural or singular. Remember, a man's Almost any night and some. The contents tell us if they refer to several or to one. A man's hand some. He is almost any night and some. Remembering that can be lots of fun. Go back to five about the girls. A man's pronoun may be singular or plural, depending on if he is referring to one or two girls. again oh a man's almost any none and some so when we have any of those five pronouns in a sentence those should alert you to the fact that now you have to look at that object of the preposition to do your subject verb agreement so before we just said this was an it right when it was um, each one body no one someone but now it says all so now we look at those go almost any none and some oh yes it's on that list that means I have to look at the object of the preposition. And cake is singular. So I call it an it, and 
I would say it is, not it are. All of the cake is on the floor. All of the papers was or were on the floor. They were on the floor. So when I think of plural, I think they. And when I think singular, I think it. That's what helps me to pick the right verb. So the verb changed and so did the pronoun it and they, right? Why? Because in the first sentence, all referred to the singular pronoun cake, and in the second sentence, all referred to the plural noun papers. So, almost any none and some, the contents of the sentence tell us if almost any none or some are referring to one or more things. So, most of the work, work is singular. So, which one would you choose? Almost any none and some? most of the bottles. So which would you choose, is or are recycled? Any of the dead flowers was or were cut? Almost any, none and some. Any branch that hung low was or were trimmed? None of the workers is or are experienced almost any none and some. None of the light is or are shining in her eyes. Almost any none and some. Some of the project is or are finished almost any none and some. Some of the projects is or are finished. All right, hopefully you did great on that, but see how neat it is to know that little trick? I mean, wow, right? Just knowing a um, one body and a man's, how that just absolutely opens your mind up to understanding you look at that object of the preposition to find your subject verb agreement. So great job. Now we're gonna do some a recap on things that we have learned before. So that ends today's session, and now we are looking at things to remember from previous lessons. Time to show what you remember. What have you learned so far? We capitalize proper nouns, but not common nouns. We capitalize brand names, but not common names. We capitalize titles when they come before a person's name, but not a title alone in place of a name. We capitalize the direct address, the person spoken to in the sentence. We capitalize races, nationalities, states, countries, regions, religions, cities, cities, streets, highways, bodies of water, mountains, proper noun abbreviations, specific courses, languages. Um, we capitalize days of the week, months of the year, and special calendar events, but we do not capitalize spring, fall, winter, and summer. We also learned that when we are quoting, paraphrasing, or summarizing, we must cite our source for all three of those. So you must put, at a minimum, the author and the page number in your in-text citation, and then have a works cited page with your author. We talked about signal phrases like in accordance with or according to, and a good way to introduce quoted evidence, paraphrased evidence, and summarized evidence. What we wanted you to take away from this is that if you're ever asked on the Smarter Balance Assessment, to put, to use evidence to support your answer. You always use quoted word-for-word -word text, unless they ask you to paraphrase or summarize, in which case you do not put anything in quotes. If you put something in quotes for paraphrasing or summarizing, then they will know you don't know how to do that because it's in your own words, not in the author's words. All right. And of course we learned um, that we will always use our spell check and we will check our grammar, capitalization, punctuation, homonyms. We'll look for sentence fragments and run-ons. We also learned in um, grammar number three about the simple sentence and adjectives and adverbs and how we start the sentence with a capital. Each sentence must have a complete thought. That imperative sentences have that understood you as the subject and they give a command or make a request like shut the door you shut the door. Adjectives describe nouns or pronouns, and they answer the questions which one, what kind, how many, how much, or whose. They come before the noun or pronoun and describe it. Adverbs can come before or after the 
adjective, adverb, or verb that they describe, then they answer where, when, how, to what extent, and why. And we looked at dialogue with, um, we looked at narrative writing, dialogue, tone, and imagery. And we learned that every time the speaker talks, a new speaker talks, we exchange lines during our dialogue and we indent. That we do not just put said, because said is dead and that's too boring, but we want to make the off the person reading um, experience our text. So we do that by putting in this dialogue, the dialogue who's in quotes, who spoke, we have our tagline that can come before or after, and it's separated with a comma before or after, unless there was that question or exclamation. And of course, what we learned today, we have, when we're looking for subject verb agreement, when we have the prepositional prepositions that have one body, right? So each, either, neither, everyone, everybody, no one, nobody, anyone, anybody, someone, and somebody, then we know they're singular. And we now know that they, them, there can be singular or plural. And when we have a man's, almost, any, none, and some, excuse me, the contents of the sentence tell us if the pronoun a man's are singular or plural. So knowing that, let's try this list. Any one of the dogs is or are welcome to join my pack. Anybody with credentials was or were allowed to present. Someone with dreadlocks is or are joining our group project. Somebody around us was or were parking in my spot. None of the workers is or are tired. None of the wind is or are hitting the house. Some of the project was or were finished. Some of the projects was or were finished. All right, and that means you are done and done. Congratulations, good job. I am very proud of you and I look forward to our next grammar lesson. Have a great day.